He would have been selected, but he, he, to be fair, Bradley's been ill for a few days. He hasn't he hasn't trained Wednesday, I think. He um, he's hasn't been around the group at all uh, for a few days. Um, he had no chance of playing because he was so weak. And um, you know, even if he was over the main bout of his illness, he was, his body had no energy really, and um, so he was never going to play this one. But no Dak in attack. He wasn't even on the bench, but Backburn Rovers grind out a 2-1 away win at the Bescott to beat Walsall and remain top of the league. We'll talk about the match and more on today's show. That's right, folks. Back once again with another match review, this time picking apart the latest match, the 2-1 victory from the Bescott the Backburn Rovers beat Walsall, courtesy of two goals from informed Danny Graham. I'll talk more about the match in one second, but if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. I'll get you bang out to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. That's right, Danny Boy scores when he wants. Graham, two goals within the first 25 minutes. In fact, the two goals themselves were only separated by, what, nine minutes? Uh, and it looked like Rovers were plain sailing. We could have even had three or four, to be honest, in the first half. But uh, a player by the name of Fitzwater hooked in a nice little, nice little creepy goal right in the right at the death at half time to give the game a bit more uh, spice in the second half. In the second half, Rovers pretty much didn't show up. It was a defensive game uh, where Rovers just held on for those important three points because results elsewhere were uh, not going our way. So both Wigan and Shrewsbury picked up uh, victories. We'll talk more about those in a little bit. But uh, yeah, a, a draw or a loss obviously would have opened the, the door for Shrewsbury to regain top spot. But no, Rovers remain on top by one point for the time being. Let's take a look at the match in a bit more detail. Here's the statistics. Rovers with 53% possession, 47% for Walsall. As for shots, Rovers had nine, Walsall had eight. Uh, however, shots on target also had six. Rovers had three, three quarters apiece and 14 to 13. Fouls in favour of Walsall. As for the style 11s, this is how uh, Walsall start the match. Robertson goal, Devlin, Fitzwater, Guthrie, Leahy, Chambers, Edwards, Dobson, Morris, Otzheimer and Shaibu up front. And once again, uh, Otzheimer does look good in a Rover shirt. Maybe, just maybe, he will be in a Rover shirt in the start for the next season. Because he looks like a quality player and a lot of the action for Walsall came through him. Uh, I think he would be an ideal candidate, and I, I thought he was a, a Turkish fella or something like that. I did a little bit of research on him uh, prior to kickoff, and he's actually English. So, uh, yeah, quality little player. Uh, Warsaw going to have to really struggle to keep hold of him next season. And, and we were linked with him uh, earlier in the season. In fact, it was pre-season. But, yeah, hopefully those links come back again, and maybe, just maybe, we will have him in a, a Rover shirt. Uh, next season. As for Rovers, this is how they lined up. I'm not, well, the formation was not like this, but uh, tough, tough poo. Anyway, Ryan Oringo, Naimbi, Mulgrew, Lenahan, Williams, Bennett, Smallwood, Evans, Payne, Graham, and Armstrong. And like a lot of people, uh, especially Rovers fans, were a little stunned not to see Bradley Dack in the starting level, but he had a bit of an in, in, uh, illness. Uh, and in fact, the illness is going right, right round, he would at the moment, with uh, Bennett. And I think Graham was, was also feeling a little unwell at half time uh, so that's a bit of concern going into the Tuesday night fixture up against Wimbledon which we will talk more about that in a preview episode probably in about 24 uh, hours or so uh, but yeah a little concerning that we lost well, Bradley Dak but it was good to see that we actually ground out a result without him in on the on the starting 11 uh, and we had to rely on the creative outlook of Payne and Armstrong Bennett was back on the wing and more of attacking sort of role and Smallwood and Evans looked um, decent enough together. But again, I said last week uh, that those two together kind of cancel each other out. But anyway, let's take a look at the match ratings for the players. This is how I feel Rovers, uh, the ratings for the Rovers players are. Oh, Ryo got an 8. He had some really good saves to keep us in this uh, match in the second half. Now, Yimby had a bit of a stinker. I saw I kept keeping an eye on him. He made a few defensive errors. He's still young. He's still got a lot of football ahead of him. I'm sure he will uh, grow and mature, hopefully, within the next 12 months, when hopefully, again, we'll be playing championship football. Uh, Mulgrew, Lenahan and Williams didn't really have the greatest game. Their first half performance or dominance uh, was kind of uh, put into question in the second half when really Walt Walsall really kind of 
put their noses to the ground and try to churn out a draw or if not a win. Into midfield, Bennett had a seven, Small had a six, Evan had a six, Payne had a seven. Up front, Danny Boy with an eight, Armstrong with a six. Armstrong had a couple of good opportunities again in the first half, but the second half was a completely different show. It was like it was like the other day when we uh, played, I think it was Berry. The first half was absolutely woeful for Rovers. In the second half, completely different outlook, and they came out and they put on a show. This time, Rovers completely dominant in the first half. In the second half, a couple of uh, words of wisdom from the Warsaw manager to the players, and then they uh, they turned uh, flicked on a switch and they started to uh, outperform Rovers quite comfortably in the end. But with the with the, with the talk of all the sickness and, and and all that going around the E Wood, um, it's it's a little uh, you know I'm sure that played played its part as well. A lot of uh, energy been taken out of the players, um, but we got the results, got the three points. And we still remain top of the table. And like I said, we do have a midweek game, as do uh, Wigan. So um, we could hopefully open up a little bit of a gap on Shrewsbury, but they will have the game in hand. Now you've heard a little bit of what I've had to say about the match. What's the gaffer been saying? Shortly after the final whistle, let's take a listen. Um, actually, we're personally a bit flat. I think we have to we have to take the points, of course, and be very happy with them. Um, we could have been out in, out of sight for staff. To be fair, we played very well for staff. Um, Danny does what he does, scored his goals. Um, could have scored more. You know, Armstrong. I think he said the goal he tipped down to the underside of the bar. But um, and then to get really, you know, kick in the stomach, really right at the death. A really, really, really disappointing goal for us all. The dressing room was a bit loud at half time. Not me. The players really were really frustrated and. Um, and it just it swung a bit of momentum, didn't it? They had some belief where if it had been 3 0 at half time towards it, they might not have even tried attacking. They might have been trying to stop an embarrassment, I think. But um, anyway, so they give them some impetus. Um, and we, we we weren't very good second half. Maybe I could find an excuse and say a lack of energy, really, if you have two players vomiting continuously for the full 15 minutes at uh, half time. But both wanted to give it five minutes to see how they got on. Um, we just lacked a bit of energy and drive, I think, second half. Um, but we got the job done. It, um, let's call it professional job. Let's call the star of the show, along with Danny, the supporters, and um, you know, an amazing turnout. And you know that they enjoyed the day. Apart from, you'd have liked to have had some action down that bottom end with the fans. We were second half, but it wasn't to be. And um, so a bit flat. But let's take the points and tick that game off and move on to the next one. Yeah, I suppose. Listen, I thought first half we were really good. I think you know it was. It was a, it was a really professional front foot quality performance for staff and we opened up lots of chances and created some goals and um, it would have been nice to have just reproduced that I suppose it, it wasn't to be as I say I think the goal bang on half time sort of swung a bit of momentum and um, but we saw the game out as I say it was professional um, performance second half if, if not you know what we were wanting but as you said you can't you can't beat your top of your game all the time uh, well, I'm personally delighted for him that he's scoring on the road there. You know, it's it's when you break his season down this this season, he's got a lot of goals at home. I'm not sure what the breakdown is, but he seems to score every week almost at home and uh, been found it more difficult away from home. So delighted for him to to lead the line like he did today, really. And um, you know, at times we target certain players, and I you know I'd have to say to you yesterday, Danny wasn't even going to start, and then having really studied the opposition, we felt another young centre half. If you think back to the game. At home, where they had a very young centre half, um, just Danny's experience, use of his body, his knowledge, his, his uh, positional taking up. His, we uh, made the decision to play him in this one, um, and it paid off, you know, big time for us. We, because we, I'm always conscious of the next game after the game coming up as well, and three games a week for Danny's always been difficult, and um, as he always, over in my period here, it's been difficult, and um, but we made a decision to. to try and win the next game which is a very obvious thing to do rather than try and win it without him but be ready for the physicality of Wimbledon on uh, on Tuesday night which we sometimes he helps us in both boxes yeah of course it's, of course it's a concern I think um, you know it's, it's great to the team that we managed to get the three points without Bradley because you know he's been a, you know a little bit of a talisman for us really whether he scores or he's generally either making it or some involvement in the goals that we create the score so um, yeah you know we have to get on with it though it's um, credit to everybody that they 
got the result today here. In, uh, in you know they've been on a good run of form. I think unbeaten since we beat them and um, stuck four goals past Doncaster recently in the last home game. So it was a good performance. And um, but yeah, let's hope Bradley's ready for Tuesday. Let's hope the lads here. It was um, you know just a, a 24-hour bug and they'll be ready for Tuesday hopefully as well. Um, we we'll, everybody in training tomorrow. We'll assess how everybody is and um, we'll go from there. Oh, yeah, he would have been selected, but he, he, to be fair, Bradley's been ill for a few days. He hasn't he hasn't trained Wednesday, I think. He um, he's hasn't been around the group at all uh, for a few days. Um, he had no chance of playing because he was so weak, and um, you know even if he was over the main bout of his illness, his his body had no energy really, and um, so he was never going to play this one. But. Hopefully he can get some food back into him and uh, he can build his strength up and uh, we'll have to see Tuesday whether he starts or whether he comes off the bench or, or whether he's available at all, but we'll, we'll know more tomorrow when we're all in training. Yeah, it's, it's a long trip for us to, to go to London and, uh, and you know everybody's saying the beast from the east is on its way as well, so the weather, we have to, um, we have to be conscious of that. I, I felt they looked a bit tired the second half. I think you know we were at the stretch really. We, ultimately, I, I went to a back three to try and see the game out in the last... 20 minutes or so, and um, you know, I think that the, cha- the change of formation sort of eased a little bit of the pressure because they were building up some pressure with the extra man in midfield. But um, let's, Tuesday's a different game, another match, another challenge, another test, um, but one that we'll be ready for come Tuesday at kickoff time. Now you've over the gaffers had to say what the players and the fans have been saying on social media. Let's take a look. Marcus Antonsen, straight off the bat, another big win. Thanks to the fans for your brilliant support. We go again Tuesday, hashtag top of the league. Elliot Bennett said, unbelievable following today. Rovers fans, first half was brilliant and then the second half showed our battling spirit to win 2-1. 12 big ones to go, Daryl Lennon. Uh, great win today. Boys battled away right to the end. Fans were fantastic once again. Derek Williams had to dig deep for that one. Our fans were brilliant today. Kept us going. 12 to go. Meanwhile, Amari Bell didn't... I don't think he got... He, he was a substitute. Yes, right. The fight today, uh, shown by the boys to get the win over the line, was class. And the support helped massively. Meanwhile, Adam Armstrong, another massive three points. Fans got us across the line. 12 huge games to go. Onwards and upwards. Jack Payne, three points today. And top following from the fans. Uh, Dominic Samuel, we keep going. Great win today, Rovers. Meanwhile, ex-player David Dunn, another great win for Rovers. And uh, a legendary Rovers fan, uh, Carl Fogarty, said uh, he just put to Rovers, thumbs up, number one. Short and sweet. Meanwhile, some of the fans, uh, Amy Lomax said, amazing, happy weekend, everyone. Remember, we have no control on anyone else's games. We just have to focus on our own. Meanwhile, James Andretti on Facebook said, this season is incredible. I'm sure I'm not the only one. But if I haven't travelled to the game from three to five, I'd have sit on my own with about ten football apps up and this Rovers page. Today, constantly flicking between our scores, Wigan and Shrewsbury, the range of emotions we go through on Saturday can't be good for our hearts. I 100% agree with you. Uh, I, I did feel comfortable tuning up. I thought, obviously, uh, the, the points are in the bag. We don't have to look at anyone else's results. Obviously, it would be nice if Shrewsbury and Wigan were to stumble up a little bit. But as long as we're winning... There's no real concern. When I got 2-1, then I started looking at the apps and I noticed that Shrewsbury had uh, not only taken the lead, they had got a second. Wigan had that one goal. They had that one goal early. Uh, yeah, I did start to flick flick through the through the apps, the Twitter, the Facebook, the Sky Sports and all that kind of stuff just to see uh, how things are going. And, you know, we got the job done. We keep top of the league and we're going to have to play those three games in hand, which I'm sure they'll get themselves back on top of the league. But we are in the promotion spaces. That's what matters the most. Meanwhile, Richard Sharp said this. Spoke to uh, Tony Mowbray and Danny Graham. Danny Graham and Elliot Bennett were throwing up at halftime. Mowbray felt Rovers lacked energy in the second half, but happy they got over the line. Meanwhile, Andy Neal, 74. Table looking good, but keep an eye on Rotherham and Plymouth. Both flying at the moment with six wins from the last six games. Twelve more very important league matches to go and still in our hands. That's completely right. Look at the, look at the green bars on that table there. Rotherham and Plymouth. Both uh, six out of six. Plymouth have come out of nowhere. They were rock bottom of that uh, League uh, One table uh, as close as December, I believe. And then they've turned it around and they've got themselves in a really good position. Uh, I, I am sure the Plymouth fans didn't expect themselves to be, realistically, didn't expect themselves to be in the playoff slash automatic promotion places. I think the automatic promotion places is a little bit too ambitious for Plymouth. As for Rotherham, 
they are they're in the mix believe it or not they are in the mix obviously they've played more games than Wigan but they play the same amount as us and Shrewsbury Scunthorpe sitting in the middle there just kind of balancing the the ship they're not coming or going they've just they've just kind of petered out a little bit same as with Charlton and Bradford uh, in fact from Plymouth down it's kind of they've kind of all gone off the boil a little bit it's kind of gone a little bit weak um, so fair play to Plymouth and Rotherham to, to keep them their seasons alive and, uh, and keep on fighting. Um, but anyway, moving forward, Steph Gardner said this, Danny Graham, heart, heart, Rovers. Meanwhile, Rachel Smith said, what a win. Second half we drifted and that, but we got the three points. Well done, DG. We love you. Indeed, Rovers chat said, thought the Rovers fans were excellent today. As usual, really got behind the lads at the end and got them over the line. On to Wimbledon Tuesday and breathe, Northern Rover. Had to dig very deep to hang on in the second half. Ryan made up for his error with two crucial saves in the second half. Danny James Corden Slater. The last time we won three on the trot, it sparked a 16-game unbeaten record. He's just keeping his mouth shut there with some emojis. Meanwhile, Glenn Frode Lanstad Throdixen. Say that five times fast. Great win, but Shrewsbury had an even more impressive win, in my opinion. They remind me of Leicester when they won the league. Incredible, really. Not sure we should worry about Rotherham. Seven points behind. Not even sure we will lose seven points before the season's over. Very good confidence there by the uh, uh, Thordrickson. Uh, I really like Murray Bell, but Murray is rightfully not going to drop Williams. So why did he even buy him? Bell is good enough for the first team, so he probably has to play out of position. That's my thoughts after today. What's yours? Meanwhile, John Mellis said this, I know a win is a win, and I'm glad before anyone excuses, excuses me of moaning, but we really made hard work of that second half. On the whole, I really like Mulberry, and I think he's done really, really well with the situations of late. But I thought two out of three were really wrong today. Once Samuel was on the ball, just didn't stick up top, and taking Evans off for Anton Anderson really weakened the midfield. Missed having Travis to bring on, but as I said, a win's a win. Frank Andrews said three very welcome points, but made hard work of it in the second half. And we are still top of the league, baby. Meanwhile, Matt Stilto ends it with this one. Unbelievable We're way backing today. Haven't heard a noise like that from our fans throughout in years. Rovers players responded with three points. Get in. Hashtag Mowbray had a dream. So that's a little bit of what's going on with the fans. Uh, let's take a look at around the grounds. Let's see some of them are Rovers players who are out on loan. So down at Wigan, uh, they took on Rochdale, where we're trying to keep an eye on Sam Hart. He didn't actually start the game, but he was on the substitute bench, but he didn't get any game time. So uh, commiserations to him. As for MK Dons down at Fleetwood under new management, John Sheridan, I believe, after Uwe Rosler's sacking. Eddie Ward started the game for the MK Dons as they were held to a 1-1 draw. Meanwhile, a Lincoln, Scott Wharton, last time out, was man of the match, but he didn't even get on the start at 11. In fact, I don't think he actually got any game time. No, he didn't, but they lost 4-1 in League 2 against Crow. So let's take a look at what's going on around the grounds in League 1. Let's take a look at the results in full. Uh, as you can see, where are we? Wigan. Obviously, 1-1-0, one, one, we already mentioned that, against Rochdale. Shrewsbury won away. Did they win away? Yes, at Charlton. That was an impressive uh, victory. 2-0. Uh, high Flyers at Plymouth Argyle. 1-0 victors over fellow playoff-chasing Bradford City. They won 1-0. Portsmouth uh, succumbed to a home defeat against Big GB's uh, Blackpool. Uh, who else am I concerned about? Scumford, they were held 1-1. One, one. Uh, Red Hot Rotherham. 2-1 in there, but there, that was a bit of a derby beating Doncaster. So the table looks like this at the bottom. Rochdale are rock bottom, but they have a whopping four games, if not five games, uh, in hand on some of the teams above them. Berry, MK Dons and Oldham also have a game in hand over Fleetwood. As for the top six, Plymouth, Scumford, Wigan and Rotherham are in there. Shrewsbury are second and Rovers are first. Obviously, we played some more games than Wigan. So that's pretty much all I've got for you today, folks. Pretty, pretty short and sweet in the, in the, in the grand scheme of things. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. But if you're new to the channel, once again, hit the subscribe button. I'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. It wasn't pretty, no, but they're not always are. Uh, we do go again, Wigan, Tuesday, at their place. And again, if we win that, we could open up a cushion between ourselves and Shrewsbury. Wigan are also in action, so they could squeeze themselves into second spot. Um... So that is uh, something to pay uh, attention to. Uh, I also want to be, uh, give a big shout out to the guys at the BRFCS forum. If you haven't checked out their forum, make sure you do so. It's a great opportunity for you to talk to fans from around the world, uh, even down the road and all that kind of stuff. I'm also on Twitter and Facebook if you want to check me out on the go. Uh, links to those uh, platforms in the description 
below. Please free to leave any comments about this video, the channel, and any other, anything else about Blackburn Rovers. I will always reply, no matter what. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to get get out of here. I've got a lot to do to build up to the next game. I'm going to go right round and start churn out the next video for the Wimbledon game, which will be a preview. 24 hours. Until next time, thumbs up, subscribe. Ciao for now. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button. It'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. But if you want to check out something completely different, head over to my other YouTube channel. You do that by pressing the button right there. If you want to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, details are in the description below. So until next time, thumbs up, subscribe.